Hey gang, uh, we're here in Adam's shop to talk about this. Yes. We talked about it on the podcast a few weeks ago. And people wanted some more information about this. This yes. is, again, part of, it's part of two things. One is, uh, I have talked about this before in relation to the toolboxes, my mm -hmm. ILM toolboxes, which the poster's up now for the promo, but um, I it came up with a process which I refer to as first order retrievability, mm -hmm. which is that I like my shop to operate so I don't have to move anything out of the way to get to other things. So when you need to go get a battery for a cordless, cordless appliance, it's just right there. You reach out, grab it's it, you don't have to dig drawer, around. It's not in a box. Yeah. It's not on. Um, now, I do have my sort of Mohs, but that's different because that's smaller materials and things well, like that. Well, they're consumables. Yes. But then there's also the tool stacks, and these are craftsman tool stacks. Um, and I tend to find that, as we said on the podcast, drawers are where things go to die. Drawers are evil. Yeah, toolboxes, drawers, you put stuff in there, something else gets on top of them, and then you never see it again. Or in the case of drawers, it goes back to the back of the thing and it's yeah. just gone. And and there are exceptions to this. If you have a, a racing truck where you you know upkeep the engine and the, the parts of a race car, you know what tools you need so you can laser cut and foam everything that right. you need. But this, my shop is a moving target. I can't quite laser cut everything that needs to go in places. You have six or eight coping saws. Right, so in the end, I decided, <laughs> I called it in the hell with drawers. <laughs> we, we called it the F drawers yes, initiative. F I drawers think. initiative. Yes. Um, and I started thinking I would like all of my pliers, nippers, grabbers, clippers, scissors, and. There's like a rivet gun down there, it looks like. No, actually. No? Uh, I'll go through some okay. of the more esoteric tools here in a bit. But I, I, I started out by laying all of my drawers full of these out on my tables and sort of taking a look at them for a couple of weeks. Then I started taking some of these hardwood slats I had and drilling holes to fit these in and started to figure out how many I could get. And I realized I could support them all on this triangular uh, sort of angled stand mm -hmm. and have sort of like stadium seating access to everything that I would it's, use it, on a regular basis. It's a basis. ziggurat of tools. <laughs> yeah, and then I put a sorter up on top for all the stuff <clears throat> that, uh, that doesn't have a, 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 an easily identifiable place. Plastic fork. You know, I grabbed these plastic forks from a catering thing because I actually really like that gunmetal chroming yeah, the, color the that they chose. Plastic chroming that they did on that was really nice. So oh. I just wanted that. That was for reference. So when you were pulling out tools, let's start at the beginning. When yeah. you were pulling out tools, did you kind of look at the stuff that you use most frequently? Is that what you were thinking about? or uh, Mostly it was sorting by category. I wanted to try and get as many things into this as possible. So obviously needle nose pliers, mm -hmm. these are not a high use item for me, but when I need them and when I need a certain kind, I need it. Right. And sorting through a drawer full of these was like, I can't see where anything is right now. Everything has its place, and it's like I reach out and I know whether I need the 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 the, the serrated grabbers or the straight jaw right, grabbers, right? Or the long, the super long, or the these yeah. big fat guys that I think yeah. are for soldering or something. Um, you know, I use wow. these clippers, Nipex <laughs> cutters. These are fantastic. You can cut piano wire all day long with these, mm -hmm. um, and each one supplies a different use for a different type of thing that I'm cutting. Uh, and I use these constantly. These are really, really useful. You mean to you, you literally use them for all sorts of things, including maybe things that they're not necessarily designed for. Uh, I have yet to find the thing that these Nipex clippers aren't designed for. Fair they'll, point. They'll cut through freaking everything. Okay. Um, I have an amazing pair of pliers here. This was wow. a medical orthoscopic stapler. Wow. So these are titanium jaws. When you pull the handle, they, they staple. But here, give me your fingernail. Uh, really give me, have, do you I don't have really have fingernail? fingernails. No, I'm not have, a fingernail okay, guy. Okay, so I'll show you. If I put my fingernail in here and I grab it, I actually... Wow, you I, can't let go. I can't let go. I can't tell you how many times this has saved my butt. I use this maybe once a year for threading through something, grabbing it, and pulling it back out. Oh, yeah. Or this, I have to imagine like if you need to hold a screw someplace to get it driven in, exactly. it's perfect for that. This, That's amazing. This is a wonderful, wonderful piece of hardware that I've had for years, actually. Uh, one of the designers of, uh, one of the early Lucasfilm designers, Nito, Nilo Rodas Gemero, uh, his wife is an operating room nurse mm -hmm. for uh, surgi surgery. Um, she gave me this. This is like medical tools. I love dental tools in general, like yes. the scrapers and the mirrors and all that stuff. Incredibly useful when you're working in small spaces. Very, very, very. I, actually, I also have a whole drawer full of sculpting tools that's 
that is fine because of the way that I use those. Yeah. It's fine for those to go into a drawer. Um, I have some cool scissors here. This is actually, this is the exact make and model of scissors taken with the Apollo astronauts as part of their medical kit. Wow. Which is funny to me because, notice how heavy it is? Yeah, they're pretty, yeah, you'd think you'd go with the light. <laughs> yeah, I found myself I mean, wondering the when same it's, exact When it's $500 thing. per half yeah. ounce or whatever it was. Yeah. They're neat scissors though. Yeah. I think it's, you know, they're, they're, they're safe edge so you can cut up against the cloth, right? Exactly, exactly. Um, now, I also realized I had all this extra space, so I put my awls and my, my uh, drift pin wrench there. Oh, nice. Uh, I've got some uh, uh, vice grips. <laughs> um, Your clamps down at the vice, more vice grips on the side, yep. some clamps. Now, on the back, one oh. of my most frequently used items, cyanoacrylate glue yeah. and the kicker, plus all blades, exacto blades, and stuff in this drawer. We haven't talked about the kicker, and I don't think have a lot of people don't. I think a lot of people don't know about this. Serious? We might have talked about it off and on, but we, it's worth mentioning again. Okay. So um, here, this stuff, it's called Insta Set. It's called yeah, and it's a it's effectively Sorry. an instant set for cyanoacrylate glue. So if I take cyanoacrylate glue, and I glue that, and you spray that right there. Okay. So we just let that stand for probably 15 or 20 seconds. And you can do something similar with baking soda, is that right? Yeah, baking soda is actually my preferred because it provides a, a, a little, oh, oh, go ahead. Another one? Yep, okay. It kind of smells nice too. Yeah, there are some model makers I know who can't stand that smell. Now this is a lot of leverage to put on the crazy glue, but again, come on, come on, there you go, look at that. Yeah. So it instantly sets crazy glue. Now, I use baking soda as well. There are people who don't like the smell of this solvent, and that's totally reasonable, because while it's a little bit sweet. It's cloying. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, baking soda also instantly kicks cyanoacrylate glue, but it adds um, material. So I've used it extensively in styrene and cyanoacrylate construction as gusset. Oh, so if you want to have like a little bit of a, a mechanical a, yeah, a, a edge, a mechanical edge, and can, uh, 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 to help with something that needs a little more strength mm -hmm. for long throws or something like that. Um, and okay. then on the bottom here, and you buy glue in bulk because it, it dries up. It does. I used to buy the big bottles <laughs> of CA glue and that's a terrible way to buy it. Almost no one uses enough of it fast yeah. enough to justify the two and three and four ounce bottles. I, so I buy it in the smallest bottles I can. Um, weirdly hard to find on Amazon. It's often sold for fly tying. Right. Um, and these quarter ounce bottles, is this quarter ounce? Yeah, half ounce. Those, those are a lovely ounce. size and they have a nice applicator tip too. The quarter ounce is my favorite. Yeah. That is because again, yeah, it's a single use. It's not really, like, that'll last me for a couple of weeks, right. but it won't dry out. Um, and then on the bottom, uh, this comes from Comic-Con. <laughs> uh, I wanted a, uh, uh, renewable power source for the recirculator for mm -hmm. my cooling suit in the 2001 suits. So I went with these Makita lithium ion 12 volt batteries. Mm -hmm. And that meant in order to make the suits work, I had to buy a couple of cheap Makita drills and cut off the receiver <laughs> for the battery. But when I ordered this, because it's not that expensive. Um, They're a hundred bucks for an impact driver and a drill and yeah. two batteries yeah. and a charger. I, I, I like the system so much, I ended up investing in the full system. I, I came over here and used them and I ended up buying the exact same set. That that angle angle that is driver. These, that is the smallest profile right angle drill I've yet found. That's super useful. Um, this is a lovely, lovely oh, little sawzall. reciprocating yeah. sawzall. Also, I will say that this Makita impact driver, not incredibly powerful. Right. Um, it definitely has a limit, and I've hit that limit in this shop a bunch. It's not yeah. going to drive a three-inch screw into a two-by-four. No, but if you're putting drywall screws in something, it's It's fine. absolutely yeah. perfect for that. And they're really nice and lightweight. I, I The DeWalt system I have, I mean, I'm fully invested in the 18 volt DeWalt system, mm -hmm. but this is a really nice... Uh, sensitive model making uh, set of drills. It's a little tools. more delicate. Yeah, a finer absolutely. tool for a more, uh, you know. Um, and then uh, up here, yo, right. This is something that a lot of people haven't necessarily seen. These are made for doing duct work, um, but it's basically a, it's a metal break, but it's a handled metal break for. Oh, neat. Yeah. So you can do the bends. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's super cool. I've never seen that before. Yeah, and they make many different kinds. There's, uh, I think they, that's a, yes, yeah, so that's straight. Same, that's a slight yeah. angle. There's heavier angles. Um, How do you control the angle? You just eyeball it or you put it up against something? Oh, no, 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 sorry. I just mean that like that goes. Oh, right, right. Right, and right, this right. is a, yeah. 
So you just you clamp it in here and then you make the fold at the at exactly. The, okay. um, but it's for for bending metal and doing again sensitive little model work. Yeah. Um, this is it's just nothing better than these. Well, and it, even if you just need to hold something flat, like it seems yeah. like it would be good for that too. Yeah. These are these are really really wonderful. I'm Wiss W I S S makes these, um, and I recently <laughs> invested in in these two, and I've already used them about a half a dozen times. You have some awls up here. I have some awls. I have a um, this. It's called a brayer. This is for Ooh, putting the sticky stuff paint, down. Paint, oh, no, 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 no. It's for the, like uh, rolling yeah. glue mm -hmm. and yeah, exactly. Okay, vinyl. Does um, it help you get bubbles out of things? It does, absolutely. And then uh, lots of my tweezers yep. and the small files. Do you? You? Yeah. It looks like you have a mix of uh, like clock makers, tweezers, and normal grabbing tweezers and all yeah, sorts of it's, stuff. It, all of it, having all of it accessible in one thing. This has become incredibly useful to me. Glass cutter. Glass cutter. Yes. Uh, it, it, this has already become a valued member of and the shop family. Did, did we talk about the enormous bin of X-Actos back well, here? You can never have too many X-Acto knives. <laughs> yes, exactly um, right. Now, just to give a precursor to this, if yep. you stand back, I'll pull this one out. So this is, again, one of my early first order retrievability carts. Um, this is all these Syot drill dispensers for mm -hmm. my drill bits. But again, <clears throat> I put up top all the things that I regularly use, calipers, uh, Allen wrenches, uh, my jeweler screwdrivers, screwdrivers yeah. of all the different kinds, pin vices, small Allens, uh, Forstner bits, Unibits, countersunk bits. This, again, I'm able to work so much faster because all this stuff is out instead of having to go to a drawer, find it, pull it out, use it, put it back. And you can see it. When you yeah. can see it all, then it means that you're maybe thinking about the problem a little bit differently. So you might think, oh, I need the Forstner bit for this. Then you actually get over here and you yeah. see something that's going to work even better. Totally. And, so. and, and it's also clear when something's not back in its place. It's just the prison rules. That, what's prison rules? Yeah, you know, they have the, the oh, tools. Oh, yeah, the tools. Yeah, right, 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 yeah. right. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, it's, and oh, I just knocked the pen off the uh, glue that we glued on earlier. Well, it's, it wasn't permanent. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> probably for the best. Uh, so this is this is this is part of just the ever-going project of making the shop more efficient. There's probably going to end up being another one of these, and I managed to <coughs> this building this. Yeah. I was able to eliminate an entire I was, five foot tall stack. That of was my next question. Stack. So yeah, one of those whole craftsman things is. I mean, it's not all the way empty, but all no, the stuff you away. use. Oh, it's gone. I, no, yeah, yeah. There was a, it was a Kennedy oh. stack, and uh, I gave it to my shop assistant. Oh, there you go. Yeah, they took it home. That's fantastic. They're very happy about it. So more of those are coming. Do you think this is the final version of this? Are you feeling pretty good about this? I feel like there's tomorrow? going. To, I think I'm going to end up utilizing some of that open space in there mm -hmm. a little bit more efficiently. Again, I've got to see how I use it in order to see how to modify it and how to augment it. And it looks, it doesn't look like something you spent a ton of time putting together. Um, I spent more time thinking about it than I did putting it together. Making it took about uh, three or four hours, but I spent several weeks sort of staring at all of these on a row on my workbench to kind of get the feel. So one thing I noticed is you didn't leave a lot of room for expansion. I assume that means if you're gonna bring new tools and you'll probably take some out? Uh, yeah, I might. And s certainly some of these could go away. It's like some of my parallel jaw pliers are a little bit broken and could be fixed. If, if I do end up replacing something, it's replaced with something of a better kind. Comparable or better. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, so F, F drawers? F drawers. They can go to hell. That's where stuff goes to die. When I built this, I actually found a knife that I had been missing for three years. It's on the, it was on the table during the, the, the uh, Still Untitled for a couple of weeks. Yeah. 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 It's amazing. So um, get rid of your drawers. Put these things. Oh, we didn't talk about the casters. The casters. So you oh, put it on casters. Right. You put a lot of stuff on casters. I do. Um, and one of the things I've discovered is that um, you can buy non-marking casters, often in lots on eBay. 16, 20, 24 at a time for a really great price. Like as opposed price to, per caster. Yes. Yeah. And if you go to the hardware store, they're just gonna have those black rubber casters. They're they're fine. But I like I you know, I want higher quality if I can get it. Big industrial ones are gonna be better than the ones you go to the hardware store. Exactly. Why not? Exactly. And yeah. so this these red ones were part of a lot I bought of twenty four and several things I have in here are on the red casters. And they're just they're fabulous. And they end up being what, like five or ten bucks each when you buy them that uh, way or less than I that? I think even less than that. Yeah. I think maybe four bucks a piece for these, which are yeah, absolutely twenty bucks if you bought them at McMaster Car oh, yeah. or more. Um, so that's it. F drawers. Uh, we will have more untested real soon. See you guys later. Thanks, guys. Bye.